<laughs> Welcome to episode 14 of the Not Another Fitness podcast. Today we're going to be discussing diet post lockdown and a lot of what you do with your diet is going to depend on what you've been doing for the last three or four months and myself and Amy are going to be sharing with you what we've been up to for better or for worse. Uh, but before we get into that, Amy, how are you doing? What have you been up to? Um, hello, Andrew, John, Scraggs. Um, that's hello, the, yes. That's the one. That's the one. Um, I'm fine. We, we only saw each other on Friday, so we've only been apart for two days. We'll soon, uh, we're soon, we're learning to not, we can't live without each other, you know, need to be, need to be uh, in contact all the time. Um, oh, I've had a lovely thanks, weekend. Thank thanks, you. mate. You're welcome. Um, I've had a lovely weekend. It's been very relaxed. Um, so the weather was quite nice this weekend. Had a few drinks on Saturday. Was in the park drinking like a good 16-year-old. So that was lovely. Um, and then went to a friend's house. And then Sunday was felt a little bit worse for wear. I'm uh, not going to lie. Standard but, weekend. Yeah, standard weekend. So got, um, but no, it was had a very active Sunday still. So I always try and do that, actually. If I, if I feel a bit jaded, just try and get out and get some fresh air. So I did a big walk with a friend in the morning, and then Jack and I went to a, the pub and had a roast dinner. It was lovely. The, the simple pleasures are coming back. In simple life. pleasures. And then we got stuck in that like flying ant swarm that was uh, everywhere. I don't know if you went out on Sunday. It was pretty awful. So I was at a barbecue around my folks. Yeah. We all sat outside. It was all lovely. And then all of a sudden, it's like the garden came alive with oh, flying ridiculous. ants. We were walking uptown and Jack was like, it's like a plague. It's it, like it something really biblical. <laughs> <laughs> I read yeah. about this at school back yeah. in back in the day. Yeah. So no, weekend was lovely. Thank you very much. Ate some lovely food, drank some lovely drinks. It was glorious. What about yourself? Barbecue at the folks, by the sounds of it. Barbecue at the folks. Yeah, plenty of booze in this weekend. Uh, yeah, as any too. as any self responsible nutritionist will tell you, we yeah. do do like a drink. Um, yeah, I was saying beforehand, wasn't I? Like whiskey is becoming my drink of choice now which is a sign of you could say maturity you could say age i was gonna say old age i had to get in there before you slapped me down Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean this is this is a little bit of a segue into what we're going to talk about but i mean my drinking habits through lockdown (laughs) have only been going in one direction (laughs) so this is part podcast part intervention on amy's part (laughs) (laughs) extreme but, diet and exercise yeah you need an intervention <laughs> extreme intervention no it was a really nice weekend like yeah on um so we're recording this i always forget to do this at the start so we're recording this on monday the 13th just to give you some some perspective of where we're at uh, so yeah on sunday around the folks for a barbecue a couple of drinks there and then me and sarah went to this drive-in theater and it was i like saw a, that on your social media yeah it's like a comedy show so there was um uh mark watson who's like a comedian yeah. who like pops up on yeah loads of the panel show yeah. sarah pasco tim key um so if you're into comedy or if you watch tv you probably even if you don't know the names you probably recognize them but yeah very funny very surreal but sitting in your car being able to text through orders and they come and bring like pints out and leave them by the side i was glad i wasn't driving let's put it that way yeah brilliant yeah it was good. at one for the team there good fun and you could tell that the comedians were like they hadn't they were telling us they hadn't performed for like since pre-lockdown yeah so they were like we're gonna be proper rusty so yeah. like, and we're performing to a bunch of cars this is yeah. not normal <laughs> so i love that though how nice to do something different yeah it was cool so every time there was a punchline, you're encouraged to like honk your horn. Uh, nice. They got very boisterous or people hanging out of like sunroofs because the weather was quite nice. People yeah. were kind of sat outside. No, it was cool. It was good. That was really cool. Was I, good. I tell you what we watched yesterday. We will segue into something like <laughs> yeah. diet and exercise related at some point. But, um, but forget fitness. Let's just yeah, talk about that. Uh, 
we so um we watched Hamilton. Have you seen Hamilton? I have not. I have oh, not. okay. So um, we've got some friends whose daughter is in uh, amateur dramatics, and she's incredible. Such a such a talented girl, and she's been going on about it for ages. And obviously, a lot of friends have been interested in it as well. So we, I uh, well, I made Jack download it. Can't say it was top of his list, <laughs> but I made him download it, and we watched it. And honestly it was incredible so i've only spoken to him once today because he's gone into the office but all it was was him sending me a picture of him downloading the soundtrack from spotify so oh, amazing it's incredible like it went, it, it went down well then it amazing. went down very well it was one of those things where as soon as it started i was like oh i'm gonna have to pay attention here but it was very very good highly recommend Excellent. Um, while we're throwing out recommendations, here's another one. I'm probably going to get this wrong. I think it's called This Country. Have you seen right. that? No. I mean, there's one. I mean, if you've seen it, hopefully you you think it's uh, you think it's hilarious because Sarah put it on randomly. You know, when like someone's watching something and they're laughing, and you kind of get sucked in because you're yeah. like, oh, what's this all about? And it's yeah. brilliant. It's kind of like. You know how like the office was set as like a fake documentary type setup. Yeah. It's like that, but it's showing life in a small village. Okay. And yeah, and then the the fun and the games ensue from there. Wicked. Very very good. Very good. Well, now we've given our uh, updates and our recommendations of the weekend. This has been not another fitness podcast. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it anyway all right let's get on with this let's get yeah. into the meat of this episode yeah so part two of um gyms are reopening should you go back so we kind of talked about in part one the exercise side of it so things that you should maybe bear in mind with regards to your training if you're going back to the gym maybe you're not going back to the gym maybe you're not ready yet and that again that is totally fine and um, that is your decision but we thought like during the podcast we kind of thought it'd probably be a good idea to do a part two with regards to like the diet side of things so um i think we'll probably start with like maybe how our diets have changed over over lockdown um I mean, we were just having a bit of a discussion before we started recording. And in terms of our own bodies, we don't really think too much has changed with our own figures and things like that. But we know that our eating habits definitely have changed. So, Andy, if I throw it over to you, how has your nutrition and your approach to your diet maybe changed during lockdown? And how is it probably going to change when we come out of it and you get back to the gym? Right. First up, I would say my body hasn't changed massively, but I, I have gained weight. Like I know that for a fact. Uh, because, have you weighed yourself? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and because I haven't been lifting weights, like you put two and two together. So there's probably going to be some amount of fat gain there. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, how do I want to tackle this one? I would say biggest difference kind of pre lockdown and how I've been eating throughout it is like a lot of people, I suppose I've been thinking less about what I eat. So I haven't been consciously, you know, dieting or consciously trying to get, um, consciously trying to eat well, like my general habits just kind of are what they are. So they're not bad. It's just quantity wise is a little bit more than normal. Quality wise is probably, slightly worse than it would be i'd say um but not in terms of like just completely eating trash it's more it probably be more around like things like protein like not being as conscious to get as much protein in as i would do um previously and part of that's because i'm not lifting so you know like the i suppose in my head i equate uh kind of rightly so like protein with repair and stuff and i'm like well I haven't really trained for however long, three months. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, do I need that shake? Do I need that extra, you know, like chicken breast or whatever it is. So that's definitely something that's something that's changed. And in terms of physique and stuff, it hasn't really, it hasn't affected it that negatively, I would say, but I do think there's something to be said for when I say I'm not eating as well, or the quality has gone down a bit or the quantity has gone up a bit that's all within a 
already a fairly tight range. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to suddenly forget to eat protein one yeah. day. I'm still going to get at least at least two, normally always three, sometimes four. And in terms of quantity wise, it's just, I'm not tracking on fitness pal. So yeah. whereas beforehand, I'd probably do odd days where I track, I just haven't really tracked at all. So mm. I know I'm like, my default position is like to, I'll always overeat a little bit because I'm always hungry. Mm. No matter what I do with protein or trying to be smart, like I can mitigate it a little bit, but my, I have to constantly tell myself, to stop eating yeah and during this period of time i've just been like nah if you're hungry just have whatever have the, you know, the extra sandwich have like a bit more ice cream have a couple more drinks mm -hmm. so i'd say it's just been a bit looser so like what that looks like on paper i would imagine would be something like i've probably been eating maybe a few hundred calories a day extra yeah and some of that would be like day to day and other times i'll be eating like kind of normally and then the weekend it's a bit yeah like yesterday would be you know by the time you calculate three beers a couple of whiskeys couple of gins it's a few calories yeah. and a nice little headache this morning i was gonna say mate <laughs> jeez help me <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's just, yeah, that, that's, that's basically been my diet. So without going into like a detailed plan of what I'm going to do when I get back, my instinct tells me I need to, I need to probably rein it in slightly would be my, that's what my head's telling me to do. And actually, mm -hmm. when I think about it, like, you know, when you go on holiday for two or three weeks and you'll indulge and you come back and you're like, right, I just need to need a few weeks of being on the case. Well, I've been doing that for a few months, <laughs> so I probably need a good couple of months of just some kind of normality. And yeah, we can go into kind of what that looks like and what that represents as we go on. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so my, what my kind of diet's been like over the last few months. So when we went into lockdown, and this is, this is how a good example of how even when you know your stuff, it's still hard to get detach yourself from your emotional responses to food. Um, when we first went into lockdown, I was still tracking. I was still putting myself in a deficit because I was still convinced I was going to put on weight. Um, so I was still tracking. Um, I soon kind of realized that what with the stress of not having a job and not really knowing what I was going to do, that that was one stress I didn't really need. So I went cold turkey and left that behind. And I haven't tracked since actually for a few, few months now. Um, same though, my alcohol intake has increased. Um, we were doing, I think we were doing a quiz with friends via Zoom on a Thursday night. So I would drink on a Thursday night. Then I would drink on a Friday night and then I would maybe have a drink on a Saturday night and like I with alcohol I can very much give or take it like not bothered at all don't never needed a drink every week never got that urge for it and all of a sudden I was drinking quite a lot so I was like mm, need to kind of leave that behavior behind that's just not a good place to be in um and yeah and it was the same kind of with the food like but for me, it's been a bit different. Like, I don't know if I've put on weight because I haven't weighed myself. Um, not because I'm scared, but just because it doesn't serve me. I don't need to know how much I weigh. Um, my clothes still fit. I'm enjoying the foods that I love. We have a takeaway once a week and I make decisions around the foods that I eat, which are informed decisions. I don't eat. I, I say I don't eat like a dickhead. I have moments when I want, when I do eat like a dickhead, but like. Define um, eating like a dickhead. Oh, just um, uncontrollable binging. I say binging, I say binging tendencies, like eating past the point of fullness to the point where you know you're, you're not even, you know, you just know you don't want it. You know, you not don't even want enjoying it. it just... Yeah. You're not even enjoying it. You're just like, it's there. So yeah, um, so yeah, I can I can eat like that, and I still do eat like that on occasions. But yeah, I um, no, if I'm wanting something, I'm honouring myself in that I'm giving it myself rather than being ruled by an app. And I've eaten like that for the last few months, and it's working really well for me. Um, so 
as to what we're going to do moving forward, I actually think I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because I'm getting back to training. I'm getting back to lifting weights. So if anything, I'm going to have more energy. Yes, I've probably the ratio of my muscle to fat mass has probably changed slightly, but because of the habits that I've had and that I have been ingrained and I have stuck with. So I am like, I am very conscious of getting in enough protein. I am very conscious of having protein in breakfast, lunch, and dinner and getting like at least 20 grams in every time I eat. So I, that is something that I, that's just the way I eat. So because of that, I think it's allowed me a little more leeway. I have had more chocolate than I usually have. I have had more desserts and more like, let's say, treat foods, hyper palatable foods. Like Jack loves crisps. I'm not really that bothered about crisps. I do like crisps, but I'm not overly bothered. But you throw some hummus in there and I'm like all over that. So there's been a little bit more like snacking in and around meals. Um, mainly because of food availability more than anything else. Um, I've noticed our food habits have been changing in terms of what we've been buying. So I've been actually been buying more biscuits, more cereal. I've been buying more crisps. I've been buying more, um, like I say, frozen goods. Like we've got like chick breaded chicken goujons in the freezer that we never would usually have. Like delicious. Yeah, delicious. Yes. So like now, and then in the last few weeks, as things have ramped up again in terms of work, so I am busier. So I am working late nights. I, you know, some, some days during the week, I finish work at 10 o'clock and I'm up at five o'clock to start coaching at six. Like, so I'm working late nights into early mornings. So I literally do not have time to prep food. So I, it is becoming a lot more convenience foods that I'm leaning on. Um, still like health conscious. I'm always very conscious, like you say, with the behaviors that I get my protein in and I get my fruit and vegetables in. So that is convenience foods for me. I say like an apple, a banana, a pear and a protein bar, or I'll throw um, some boiled eggs in. I'll get some boiled eggs and some spinach. And like that is like, or I'll, we pre-cook some chicken sausages. Like that to me is convenience foods. They're yeah. still not like... It's still not a share bag of Monster Munch, but you know. So yeah, that's uh, that's how my diet's been and changed. And I think moving forward for me, that's actually quite a healthy place to be in in my mind. Um, so I'm probably not gonna track um, or not gonna monitor my calorie intake just because now things are getting back to normal a little bit more. My activity has increased massively. Um, but that's come from an assessment of what my, of how my life has changed. And I think that's something that you need to be very aware of going back into the gym with regards to how your daily activity has changed and what your needs are setting up your diet. So one thing, like I've just said, I am buying more biscuits and things like that, that will not be knocked on the head straight away. So like, that will not serve me anymore. So that is something I would definitely leave behind. Like, is there anything that you can think of with regards to that that what, might have uh, changed? Things that will change straight away. Mm. Um, nothing specific. I would say if you look at my diet now versus what it will be like maybe in a month's time, the three things I can safely say are going to be different. One, I'll start tracking. Two, there'll be less alcohol and three there'll be less calories <laughs> like those those three things will be like that'll if you look at actually the foods that make up my like day to day they're they're not going to be vastly different yeah uh, like yourself like things like i don't really I, I love crisps but i don't really eat a ton of them yeah there's, there's always like a yeah you know, maybe a six pack of what we got downstairs like lentil curls hula hoops oh, whatever they are the worst talk what? about a health halo what, lentil curls? oh they're delicious though oh they're so good so good um but yeah so they, they'll be there but i'm not like shoveling those down you know six pack at a time um i'm always good with like fruit and veg that's just something that's kind of ingrained in like i said protein will be like protein maybe a little bit higher but mm. for, for me, like the biggest change would just be when I'm like slathering on almond butter onto crumpets or sourdough, I'm going to have to start measuring that. Well, I don't have yeah. to, but I'm going to just to get myself back to some kind of like this morning for, this is a great example. So I had like a, there's two crumpets left. 
and there was a bit of almond butter left. And there's probably enough almond butter for, I would say, four normal crumpet servings. I'm not leaving that small amount in there. Those bad boys were like probably 50 50. Yes. Like teeth marks in the almond butter. I, when I, I basically like just had to keep on spreading it to like, so it soaked in. Oh, <laughs> like, it, it felt more like the consistency of a biscuit or a cookie when I picked oh. them up. I was like, these are quite weighty, <laughs> but they're so good. Dense. So good. Yeah. I mean, that and the combination of me losing my strength through this lockdown period is a bad combination. Love it. Um, Love it. So, yeah, things like that. And I think. This is like a broader point, but it's one that when we, when we decided we were going to talk about this and, and we, we asked the question, you know, what are we going to change or what should people change or what you should consider? In actual fact, your diet shouldn't be this kind of no. roller coaster of, no. oh, for this period of time, I eat like a dickhead. Yeah. This period of time, I eat like an angel. Yeah. There should be a bit more of a not like mountains it should be yeah. more kind of like you know rolling hills yeah. for the want of a better analogy so that's something that i think we're in a in a i suppose like a, a privileged position because of what we do and being in it we're never going to go completely off the rails for for a long period of time um because no. then there's one thing about putting on a few pounds or whatever oh my god my body fat's gone up by a couple of percent that's one thing, but months or years of eating poorly then starts having an impact on health. And that's not, that's kind of one of my, yeah, we talk about things that are like things that change and things that are non-negotiable. Well, like health to me is a non-negotiable. Like mm. I'm always going to be active. I'm always going to be eating. I'm never going to become morbidly obese, for example. Um, well, <laughs> not our choice anyway. <laughs> if this lockdown goes on for another year, <laughs> come back to me you need to see a gym sometime to know that that's for yeah, sure exactly yeah exactly gym would be yeah. ideal no it's true and like i'm like i'm the same like the foods i still in, eat and like the and enjoy and i don't like saying rules because i don't think you should have rules but like the good practices the, yeah the good practices that i live by in terms of fruit and veg adequate protein content um I've been the same the whole time. The things that changed that have really altered my intake have been the habits and the behaviors. So I, one thing that I make sure I do now at the weekend, which I definitely, which I do during the week is I try and do have breakfast within that eight to nine o'clock window, because I just feel being in a routine with when I eat my meals keeps my energy levels more sustained. It stops me over consuming when I eventually do have a meal. And because I wasn't doing that at the weekends, it meant that weekends I tend to get into that whole, what I call fuck it mindset. And it would lead to these massive periods of overconsumption. So, but having a bit more structure with my meals is something that I'm definitely going to do. And just like I say, food availability, because I know I'm looking at the cupboard right now, that is our spread cupboard. And you've just talked about almond butter. And I know in that spread cupboard, there is a jar of galaxy cookie crumble chocolate spread and a jar of a kilo tub of almond butter and a white chocolate grenade spread and a chocolate orange spread. So that is my like kryptonite. And I've also looking at the cupboard that's got the Oreo biscuits and the Lotus biscuits in as well. So Step one, lock cupboards. Exactly. Give so it's things, <laughs> it's things like that, that, and again, this might be a good segue into, into the next topic, which I might have bought during lockdown in terms of self-soothing you know, using food as a little bit of maybe an emotional crutch because I was, you know, in a highly stressful state, which is absolutely okay to do. We all do it. And I'm sure there are people that have done it during this people pe period of lockdown and are maybe quite not so happy with the results as a result because I have put on weight. But one thing I'm definitely going to stop doing is I'm going to stop buying those foods. And it's not to say I'll never buy them again, but food availability is a massive issue that causes overconsumption. So if you're about to go back to the gym or if you're about to go back to work and your um, habits or your routines are about to change or you want to try and achieve a goal, I would actually look at, do you actually need to buy those foods? 
um if you because if they're not in the house you can't eat them so i will well i'll be finishing the galaxy spread first and then i won't buy any more so. yeah obviously i mean yeah. it'd be crazy to throw it out now exactly like, committed yeah. to it yeah um yeah like the the habits food environment food availability like those those are sometimes the I suppose under appreciated aspects of setting up a diet like it's easy mm. to think about you know calories or you know should I go low carb or like the method of the diet when really mm. there's some really easy kind of wins to be had in terms of food environment and setting yourself up to succeed or at least setting yourself up for an easier time of it yeah um, one thing I suppose maybe like just kind of taking a step back we've spoken a little bit about you know what we might do personally and so you could say you know we're going to be maybe changing a couple of things but it's not going to be this massive overhaul but for anyone out there who's listening to this and you're thinking right as soon as i you know as soon as i get back in the gym or as soon as like lockdown's eased and things are back to normal um i'm going to change my diet or i want to do something with my diet and i suppose the first thing to think about is do you need to like mm. should you um because I think it will come from a place of, I think there's going to be two main drivers of people wanting to change their diet. There's going to be a group of people that um, have put on weight during lockdown or, or maybe just the diet's taken a, has taken a back seat. So food quality might have gone down or food quantity may have gone up. They're going to be the two kind of negatives. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of people that have, their diet suffered during lockdown and now they're in a place where they want to change it, which I think is like, completely fair enough yeah and then there's going to be another group of people that their diet may or may not have changed but their exercise habits in returning to the gym they are going to be changing imminently so they want to have they want to fuel themselves for the best possible workouts or support that additional training that's going to be making up part of their week so i think they're the two if, if you fall into one of those categories or maybe even a bit of both then i think there's a case for taking a bit of time and looking at the diet and making some changes to it. If you're not rushing back to the gym and actually your diet's been, you know, kind of so, so for that lockdown, I wouldn't be rushing to make a ton of changes to it just because, um, just because a lot of people are going to do it. Don't feel like you have to, it's got a bit of a January vibe to it. Yes. Massively. Do you know what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like people kind of doing, dry January or detox or something when it's like, well, yeah, maybe you've had a little bit more, but there's, there's no need for any kind of drastic shift. Just no. you know, maybe it could even be like a couple of weeks of just start getting back into the gym and then maybe, maybe look at it. But um, yeah. first question to ask yourself, do you need to, you know, do you need to change your diet? Don't go jumping on some kind of bandwagon just because everyone else is. Yeah. And yeah massively like if if it is just a case of the only thing that changed for you over lockdown is that you weren't at the gym then just go back to the gym yeah, and like keep, keep the diet as it is and you'll probably make changes again your body will probably snap back to how it was before and that's to be honest why i'm not changing too much about my diet apart from reining in the little you know odd biscuit here and there and even then like What's the worst it can do? Come at me, Oreo biscuits. Um, but like, what if maybe we should say address then? So what if you have put on weight over lockdown, like a significant amount of weight um, as a combination of both those things? So making poor food choices, overconsumption of calories, either through low quality foods or just you know, self-soothing that's actually led to a lot of weight loss and a decrease in activity, whether that be through gym or through just actually not leaving the house. So, cause obviously there is going to be quite a few people that are, that do fall under that umbrella. And that's going to make, like we talked about on the previous podcast, that's going to make coming back to the gym a lot scarier and it's going to make getting back to that place of health or that place of confidence seem a lot more uh, daunting. Um, like what would be your suggestions for maybe those people? Right. So I was thinking, I knew you were going to ask me that. And yeah. I, was th I was thinking about it as you were, as you were talking. Would um, you like me to answer it first and say what my suggestions would be? You can do. 
Yeah, yeah, go on. You uh, go. You roll. So my suggestion for someone like that who's going to throw themselves into the gym and wants to change their diet as well, um, first thing I would focus on just with the diet is an easy one is just food quality. So just get your five portions of fruit and veg in a day and like vegetables with every meal. So make your plate as colorful as possible. And I, when I say five portions, I mean at least. So like make your plate as colorful as possible. Focus on lean sources of protein. Cut down on processed, fatty, sugary foods that are going to contain lots of trans fats and mean that you can actually overeat them. Um, and maybe look at your alcohol consumption. I mean, they are just some really, really easy things to do that if you consistently do those for a few weeks, if you have put on a lot of weight and then you're going back to the gym and you're increasing your activity outside of the gym as well, those things will actually make quite a key difference. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Um, adding to that, I suppose you have to think about again, uh, this is a podcast bingo. Now <laughs> I'm going to say that everyone's yeah. really individual, individual circumstances. But you have to be honest with yourself and think about how much your diet has. So let's say you put on weight, yeah? If you put on, let's say you've been out of the gym for 16 weeks and you put on somewhere between half a pound and a pound a week. So you're going back to the gym somewhere between half a stone and a stone heavier. Now, if you're not in a rush, I would probably just start training again maybe make a couple of the kind of broad stroke tweaks, like you said, the things that actually should, you should be doing all the time anyway, as in eating fruit and veg is not something that you do or don't do when you diet. You just eat fruit and veg all the time. Ditto protein, ditto fiber, you know, like ditto healthy fats. So like all these things should form kind of part of the diet anyway. So maybe, yeah, the two things you, you're going to do, start training again and look to increase food quality and, and that's going to be look at your diet and kind of be honest with it and make the tweaks there. So that might be enough to then shift you into a, um, at least of at least maintenance, but maybe even a small deficit. And then you just get into it. You enjoy your training as the weeks go on, you're just chipping away, you know, like half a pound, pound a week and you do that for the next couple of months, three months. And then maybe you're back to where you were pre there's nothing wrong with doing that. And actually, if you've got time on your side and you're patient, that might be a better way of doing it. But if you're impatient, like at least half of this podcast duo, and I'm talking about myself, um, you might, for you, it might be less painful to go at it slightly harder, accepting the fact that you might be a bit hungrier, but get the weight off quicker. Um, and as long as you're not in the realms of like, I'll call, I'll call this one dieting like a dickhead, like 500 calories, running half, running half marathons, being a complete lunatic. Mm. I mean, when I talk about like a, a slow and steady rate of loss, like that's kind of like half a pound to a pound, slightly more still sensible ish, but you know, a bit more aggressive would be more like pound and a half to two pounds, which is probably where I'm going to find, find myself at some point. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, I suppose what I want to get across is the temptation is always to go at it harder, try and chase three pounds a week, four pounds a week. And you cannot do that. Like if you've put on a stone, you can't do, you won't have that rate of loss for like four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. You just won't manage it. Um, and then you set yourself up for a bit of a, you know, deprivation, break the diet, binge, feel bad deprive yourself again yeah. and the restrict yeah. binge cycle continues yeah. so yeah maybe to start with for most people just get back in the gym make it something regular increase the food quality and then for those of you that are a little bit impatient out there um maybe you do look at making a uh, a little bit of a dent in the calories so that could be just like the alcohol and the and the junk food going though that could be yeah. 400, 500 calories a day. Oh, massively. And like, the reason that I would suggest like 
more of a I don't even want to say holistic but more of like a let's say visual approach to it in terms of like focusing on food quality maybe cut out that alcohol for a little bit or at least like you know dial it down if you've been drinking like three or four nights a week maybe cut out the takeaway or just make some healthier options is because it's summer it's July we're heading into August and also we've been in a period where social interaction has been really really limited and restaurants and bars are opening again so the tendency for people is going to be that they still want to go out they still want to have a good time there's still going to be barbecues there's still going to be alcohol so like you say if we're not realistic with ourselves about what we're trying to do or what we're trying to achieve and how we can actually fit these things into our lifestyle then you could end up in a real binge restrict cycle because you're like right I'm going to go at it oh but there's a barbecue happening this weekend and I don't know how to navigate that while being in a weight loss phase so I'll just it's fine I'll just like you know I'll just write Saturday off and Overconsume because you've underconsumed throughout the whole week. So you're not in tune with your hunger and fullness cues. Your hormones might be a little bit out of whack. And then all of a sudden, you three months down the line, you still haven't got any further forward. In fact, you might have even put a little more weight on. So it's it can be a very slippery slope. So yeah, that's why it depends. Like if you've got the if you've got the motivation and if you've got the willpower to be able to do it short and sharp then and like resist a few weekends or resist a few things and actually stick with it then yeah that might be the best option if you haven't if you can actually look and be like oh well I've got my wife's birthday coming up then or I've got a barbecue then or that was going to be you know a big social thing I know there's a party happening now we can all get together then it just might not be the best idea but for for, you know for most people I think going back to the gym coupled with just a few key tweaks is going to be enough yeah I agree I agree like most I think for most people that's exactly what they need to hear and also just picking up on that point of the the social you know social occasions that may or may not be in the diary and i would imagine there's going to be an influx of socializing because of pubs being open because of not having seen family members not seeing friends now suddenly like at the moment it feels like the restrictions are only going one way they're only kind of easing off so they're promoting like going out and meeting up probably in like slightly bigger groups um if you look at the this is such an underrated skill Oh, not even a skill, just but something to keep in mind. When you embark on a diet, and especially if you've got lofty expectations, look at your diary first and adjust <sighs> expectations accordingly. Because there's certain things where, you know, your partner's 40th birthday, um, you know, parents' wedding anniversary, whatever it is, like big things that you know you're definitely going to be attending. Well... I'm kind of of the opinion that no diet is more important than going and like, you know, celebrating with friends and family. Like that's just a tragic kind of loss if you can't do that. Um, Whereas if it's just a case of going out for a few beers with your mates that can end up being 10 beers and a kebab, then those are the things that if you want to go at it like harder and really kind of nail the diet, you might have to forego those in the short term. So then it's a case of like sitting down and thinking to yourself, am I prepared to do that? And spoiler alert, there isn't a right or wrong to that. It might be like, you might be like, oh, do you know what? I haven't seen my mates for ages. I really, I really want to meet up with them. It's really important that we're kind of stay connected socially. Then just go have a few drinks. Don't worry about it. But just accept the fact that the, the rate of uh, weight loss, if that's what you're going for, might be a little bit slower. But yeah. that's fine. That's Massively. It's all good. It's like I always say, like, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be uh, th- something. There's never a perfect time. Exactly. Perfect but like, time. save yourself for the A-list stuff, you know? Like, if you save yourself for the A-list stuff that you know you want to be there and be present and enjoy and you're not going to harbor any kind of guilt about it because you're like, this is really important to me that I enjoy this time and everything that it involves then go for it. Like absolutely go for it. But like you say, there's always going to be something and some period of sacrifice. Um, Yeah. But you you used that the other day when we were talking, um, 
we were just talking about something else but that uh I love the concept of the A list. Yeah. Like and it is a case of you know like your mum, you know parents or siblings or partner, guess what? They're part of the A list. They're the A list. But even then like I I use this quite a lot because right Going out for dinner with Jack for us to celebrate our anniversary, for example, in London, lovely restaurant, A-list. Going to the cinema on a Friday night does not mean I have to consume a share bag of twirls and a large sweet and salty popcorn along with a Tango Ice Blast. That is not A-list, okay? That is going to sabotage any kind of goal that I've probably got. So can I just get a two finger twirl get a coke zero and you know get a a pop a proper corn bag of popcorn from tesco's and not what smuggle it into the cinema you're allowed to take your own food into the cinema you're allowed to do this what (laughs) yes you are anyway separate point separate point but you see what i mean like You don't have to use every social occasion as an opportunity for overconsumption. Like going to dinner with my boyfriend is definitely a list. Going to the cinema is not. I can easily not eat going to the cinema. So you've added you've added another layer to your already. uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I love that. I love the concept of the a list. But now it's a case of like, right, who is it with? But like, what are we doing? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. That's that's another. Those should be the two things. Who am I doing it with, and what are we doing? (laughs) It's like, oh, it's with Jack, so that's up there in importance. But going to the cinema and demolishing like a bucket load of popcorn yeah. is something that you can, yeah, pretty easily forego. Oh, don't that, get me wrong, Jack sees that as an A-list every time. That's yeah. like a prerequisite. <laughs> Whereas I, I will just be like, hang on a minute, like, you what pick is and, important here? Pick and choose your battles with that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, that's, that's so true. That is so, so true. Because you can, when you start talking about the that scenario, that to me has got, like excuses written all over it massively because it's very easy to be like oh well my partner wanted to get a takeaway or Mm. that kind of thing yeah no I get that I get that that's a thing but yeah it's did you you have to have the did you have to have the chicken tikka masala Yeah. yeah or could you actually have just got um, the tandoori chicken that's dry roasted, that's dry, like dry cooked in a clay oven and then had a little bit of rice and rather than like a naan bread and onion bhaji. Like, do you oh, know what I mean? Like all the good stuff. You can still enjoy the good stuff. You just, it, you're not missing out on the, the, the most important, that really winds me up with social things and the way people perceive social things. People perceive the, social, the food element of the social as the most important thing. The food element is part of it, but the most important thing is the moment. The most, you're never going to be like, oh, do you remember that time at, you know, our mum and dad's wedding anniversary where I had that, you might be where I had that amazing steak or like something like that. But with things like that, especially where it's friends and family involved, the most important thing is the moment. It's not the food. So, I think you've you know. you got to take it on a case by case basis, mate. <laughs> Who am I with? What am I eating? 100%. Yeah. All right. If, if, the ste- if the steak's amazing, I'm out with some complete tool. I'm gonna, definitely going to be remembering the steak <laughs> and not, not who I'm with. True that. True that. Okay. Yeah. But you, you feel me, you know what I mean? I, I do know what you mean. I do know what you mean. Um, but that, so I'm the least kind of like, you know, don't make excuses person in the world. But I do think a lot of this comes, this, this finds its way down the being honest with yourself path. Yeah. Cause you'll get to a point where, and this is people that kind of struggle with their weight. Um, and have, you know, kind of tried everything over the course of years to do something about it if you know what to do so there's kind of like the, we've spoken about this before like the lack of knowledge so once you so let's assume you know what to do but you just don't do it if you know what to do and you don't do something it's because you don't want to do it like it it, it, it that is that simple and that's really hard sometimes for people to the initial response sometimes from people with that is no 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 i, I couldn't because of you know, whatever we had a night out or I wanted to drink or it's like, no, exactly. You like, you wanted to do that instead. 
and that's yeah. part, it's just being honest with yourself and saying, no, do you know what? I don't want to diet for months on end. I'm happy with being in the body where I'm at. I can go out and have like drinks with my friends or go and have a meal or go and have the popcorn. And I love it. And actually that's more important to me. Yeah. Just be honest about it. Yeah. Cause I, cause I, I just, I could not care less in, in terms of that. If someone wants to do that. Yeah. Um, if, cause if we, we, you can still do all those things and be completely healthy, like as long as you're at like training, being active in yeah. my opinion, way more important, way more health yeah. benefits of being like, you know, give me someone who's active, but carrying a few extra pounds versus someone who's, you know, normal body weight, but not doing anything exercise wise. Yeah. Um, massively. Yeah. But. Massively. Another thing I think like, just before we go way off topic, um, another thing I think like, cause we started talking about food and meals and popcorn. Uh, that's a slippery I mean, that's, slope with us. That's my M and S advert <laughs> right there. Um, another thing with regards to like getting back to the gym and like th thinking about the diet as well is if you haven't trained for four months and you're going back to the gym and you're committing to doing for even three sessions a week, you're going to be sore. Okay. So bear in mind that if your goal is weight loss and I took, here we go, podcast bingo, stress, and you are implementing a new stress on your body by training and actually starting to do resistance training again, you want your body to make adaptations to that. And if you are trying to implement resistance training after not doing it for four months and put yourself in a calorie deficit you're going to be really sore so not actually eating adequate protein or adequate adequate calories is going to have a real impact on being able to recover from that you might go back to the gym for one week be able to commit to that for one week and then be broken again for another month so it's just, it's that key thing of when someone wants to commit to a health promoting behavior, they want to try and change too much too soon, or they want to throw everything at it because it's all or nothing. And I get that, of course, but I would, I mean, I, I, me personally, as a professional, I would much rather you try and do change one thing that you can commit to before it becomes a habit again. Plus, like we talked about on the last podcast, gyms aren't going to suddenly be like, oh, you can come and go whenever you want. So it might be that, okay, I can only train three times a week. All right, well, let me commit to that. Let me see how that fits in with my work schedule now. And I'm working from home and the kids are just about, about to have summer holidays as well and everything like that. Okay, if, if I can do that for a month, maybe I can think about making nutritional changes as well. Or it might be that you're not coming back to the gym so, but you can be more active outside or you've got a little bit more time to go shopping. Maybe you can learn how to cook or, you know, get some new meals going. So it's really important to be realistic with yourself and what you're about to change and what you're going to put your body through. Yeah, because I think if you're, if we're talking about that population of people that are going back to the gym and are introducing resistance training back into the mix, you we spoke on the last podcast that like people are going to be sore regardless. Even if your diet is like absolutely on point, you're going to be feeling it after those first couple of sessions. Look at my little barbell kiss. Look, massive bruise. Started <laughs> playing around with the barbell. Like for, fitness is bad for you. For those of you who haven't got access to the video portion of this podcast, Amy is displaying her, yeah, the barbell kiss. <laughs> The, basically the a massive bruise on, on the collarbone massive bruise on my collarbone yeah but like you know you're sore things happen yeah and if you're i suppose if you're go, if you're going to make one dietary intervention in terms of trying to support that um repair process it is going to be to get well two things enough protein and enough calories total um so that goes kind of in contradiction with people that are trying to lose weight that are going to be probably eating slightly less calories so you have to you have to either a know what you're doing and kind of so i class myself as someone who kind of goes by feel a little bit more because i can kind of i'm honest enough with myself in terms of like changes from session to session like how i'm feeling energy levels how have i slept how much stress is going on outside of the gym where if i after like day four or five, if I'm feeling absolutely trashed, I will eat a bit more. Like I've got no qualms about having a bit more or even taking an extra rest day. Um, but for people who are a bit, um, who are less experienced and, and that like the, the structure and the plan, 
or don't impose a really strict calorie restricted you know low nutrient plan alongside a ton of heavy training because you you best case scenario like i said on the last podcast best case scenario you just feel like shit and you're lacking energy worst case scenario you pick up an injury within the first week or two and that's just that's just not the place to be so even though we're saying part of our i would I'd say both of what we're advising is not to overhaul everything but i think like a small change in either area is probably quite smart so starting training again even if it's like a couple of days a week um actually i mean that's like a fairly big thing for the body but like in, in terms of your diary that's like you know one thing you have to look for but the diet side of things you don't want to be you don't want to be trying to change everything in one hit just look at like one or two things so like a little bit more protein and like we've said at least twice already on this podcast getting in the fruits and veggies to um yeah just to support general function yeah massively and again another one for podcast bin bingo just don't overcomplicate it honestly yeah, keep it simple just as keep you can. it simple keep it simple and while we're going on podcast bin bingo sleep hydrate stress there you go sort them out ding 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 ding, ding. full house covered, covered all boxes <laughs> Right, mate. Is there anything else that you would like to discuss on this topic? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, I think that's good. I think we've covered all bases. Um, if anyone does have any questions more specifically about, you know, heading back into the gym, about how to support their training, then like Andy said at the start, it is very, very individual depending on your goals. These are just kind of real general things to keep in mind. And, you know, we we are all about the pursuit of health um regardless of what your specific goals are so i would always say slow and steady wins wins the race particularly if you haven't got a uh, you know a time frame with regards to your goal i mean no one's really going on holiday anytime soon anyway so you know there you this go is, this is, true. This is I, true i would echo that and i would say um yeah it's I can I can just foresee people like charging back into the gym yeah on the on the weight loss buzz like so like I see this I definitely see this as a a January situation or a yeah. new year's resolution kind of waiting to happen um and if you know people that are going back to the gym or if you're a trainer or a coach I think I I see people in January as being quite vulnerable even though like enthusiasm and motivation can be quite high, so is vulnerability and they're susceptible to kind of jumping on board with some pretty mad diets or training mm -hmm. plans. Um, so obviously if you're a coach, this kind of goes without saying, but um, sometimes your job will be winding them back in a yeah. notch, like trying to keep that enthusiasm and that, yeah, look, we're starting something new. There's an, there'll be a level ex of excitement of doing something new regardless, mm. but clients are going to want to throw the kitchen sink at it and it's yeah. it's probably prudent if you're looking after their long-term health and health being the key word here just uh try and bottle that enthusiasm and um yeah distribute it over the next three months not the next three weeks <laughs> yeah and like and also like we said on the last podcast if you are in that bracket of you have put on a lot of weight over lockdown no one is judging you and we would much rather you did something rather than did nothing but don't think that you are going to be judged because this has been a really difficult time for people and whilst turning to food isn't necessarily the best way of dealing with it it is a way of dealing with it that some people you know that some people do turn to and that lot, will always be the people, case yeah, yeah a, lot a lot of people. people because like we've just talked about with regards to the memories like food serves our emotions and it does serve our emotional well-being so no one no one judges anyone well no one should judge anyone for doing that um because you know it's just part of part of our stress management techniques um and we've all done it at some point um and it's better off that you start somewhere than you don't start at all absolutely and if if you're listening to this so we'll we'll definitely release these before the before the gym opens again mm -hmm. so have a think on on what we've said over the last couple of episodes 
and and like Amy said previously, when we talk, especially when it's like more, uh, I would call this like a broader topic, we have to talk in like generalities, and mm. we we set up little scenarios, but we have to speak generally. So like when we say things like eat more fruit and veg, or try and manage your stress, or get good sleep, I mean those are things that we can confidently say are going to benefit everyone listening whereas how much protein you should get or what your training split should be and should you be doing supersets with these two exercises that is going to be a lot more individual based so like how these podcasts i think work really well we'll have topics in mind but when we get questions like if you're ans- if you're asking a question ask it about yourself like make it you know make it really specific because actually that makes it really easy for us to or a lot easier for us to answer and we can answer your specific question and then we can kind of draw out of that and then talk about the general principles behind you know what we're recommending or or what might be applicable to the to the public at large and biceps and triceps superset always standard always friday night always (laughs) friday night arms no yeah completely agree completely agree great point to end it on cool uh, it's been a, an absolute pleasure as always amy uh as always and i'll see you in the gym <laughs> if not beforehand it's getting close i'm looking forward to it uh, yeah i'll reiterate that point again any questions any feedback um we'll drop our our socials in the comments or wherever you're listening to this so feel free to contact us but um Yeah, that's me. Until the next episode. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Not Another Fitness podcast. If you liked what we do, please subscribe and share. Tell all your friends. And if you want to follow us over on our socials, you'll find me and my contact details over on Instagram at The Flying Food Coach. And you'll find Andy over at Facebook at the Facebook group Eat, Move, Lift, Enjoy or feel free to drop me an email on info at andrewjohnscraggs.com. Thanks again for listening. Until next time. That'll do. Yeah, that'll do. That's good. That'll do. I'll put that on there as well. That'll do. (laughs) 